It is just about time for the Super Bowl and if you are a football fan and you're getting ready for the big game day and looking for some snacks to feed you and your family or you and your buddies or maybe a big group or maybe it's just you. <laughs> and if you're trying to do it on a plant-based diet, no worries. I have got you covered. So I'm going to be putting together a few recipes that are not only great for Super Bowl snacks, but they're great for snacks anytime, any time of the week, any time of the year. They're just yummy and super easy to make. Now I'm not promising that these are super low in fat and some of them may not even be considered healthy, <laughs> but they are delicious and like I said, they are easy and everyone is going to love them whether they are vegan, plant-based, vegetarian, non-vegetarian, flexitarian, you name it. Everybody is going to love these. I will leave either the written recipe in the description box below or a link to it which will probably be leading to my blog vegerarchy.com. I've got lots of recipes on there as well as a free ebook that's a few simple vegan recipes that anyone could put together. I've also got meal plans with PDFs that you can download. Lots of stuff to check out. So don't forget to check the description box below for all that stuff. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. I love to hear your comments and I don't get enough of them. So please let me know you're out there watching and what you think of the video. If you have any questions, if there's something you want to see me make, all of that. Your support really means a lot to me and it helps my channel grow so I can reach more people just like you. So without any further ado, let's make some snacks. We're going to start with some baked potato skins. So you want to wash your potatoes really well and then prick them all over with a fork. Then we're going to put them in the oven at 400 degrees and be careful of those small ones because they just might fall through the cracks. We're going to bake those for about an hour and when they're all baked, we're just going to cut them all in half. Next, we're going to scoop the insides out of those potato halves and make sure you leave a little bit around the edge. You don't want it to be just skin. You want a little bit of potato in there. And don't throw those insides away. You can use those to make these absolutely yummy potato taquitos. You know you want these. I found these Korean style mushroom shreds from Wicked Kitchen in my local supermarket. They're made from king oyster mushrooms and it looked interesting so I thought I would go ahead and give it a try. You don't have to use these if you don't want to but if you want to give it a try, um, they were interesting. It, it had sort of like a sloppy joe-esque flavor if you know what I mean. And I'm using these Colby Jack shreds from Violife. Violife is one of my favorite brands and the Colby Jack is definitely my favorite. But there are so many different kinds out there that you can find at most grocery stores. So just pick what sounds good to you. I also added some green onion, olive, and some sunflower seeds to the top of these just for a little added crunch. And we're gonna put those back in that 400 degree oven and they'll cook for about 20 to 30 minutes. Now look at them at 20 minutes and see if they're crispy enough for you or the cheese is melted. I left mine in a little bit longer just to melt the cheese. And then I'm dipping it in some store-bought vegan ranch dressing. So now we're gonna move on to corn dogs. Mmm, little corn dog bites. Um, these are a recipe from the Cheap Lazy Vegan. We're gonna start out with some cornmeal, some flour, a little sugar, some baking powder, salt. Make sure you get it all in there. Mm-hmm. And then we're just gonna mix that up. And then we're gonna add some almond milk or whatever kind of plant-based milk you have on hand. It really doesn't matter. And then the applesauce is not only to sort of replace the egg, 
but also to give it a little sweet flavor. It kind of enhances the sweet flavor of corn. And then of course we need some hot dogs, so I'm using these smart dogs from Light Life, but whatever you can get up your hands on will work just fine. They're pretty much all the same in my experience. You wanna have a little bowl of some liquid nearby when you're doing these so that your hands don't stick to the dough and just get those little hot dogs covered in the dough and then we're going to roll them in some panko breadcrumbs. Like I said, this is a cheap, lazy vegan recipe. She made these in the air fryer, which I'm sure would work awesome. I have an air fryer that I absolutely love, but I had the oven on already on this day, so I figured I'd just bake them all in the oven. So those are gonna bake at 375 for about 20 minutes. And in the meantime, we're going to make some buffalo cauliflower wings. I've been wanting to try these for quite some time and this is a recipe from Glue and Glitter. I wanted to do a baked version of them um, again because I'm using the oven and I didn't want to deep fry anything. To make the buffalo sauce we'll put a couple of tablespoons of plant-based butter into a pan along with any kind of buffalo style sauce that you want. I got this habanero wing sauce from Melinda's and it was quite spicy. So if you like it really hot, um, this is a good one to go with. If you don't like it so hot, I would recommend going with something milder. And when that's all melted together, we'll pour it into a cup or a glass. This just makes it easier for dipping. And I'm just adding a teaspoon of salt to a bunch of panko breadcrumbs. Yes, we're using panko again a lot in this recipe because panko breadcrumbs just get so nice and crispy when you bake them in the oven. So I just love them for baked things like this. And we're just gonna dip all those cauliflower florets into the sauce and the breadcrumbs. And I did need a, quite a bit more of the breadcrumbs than the recipe called for, but I will leave the link to that recipe in the description box below. And we will put these into the oven at 375 for about 30 minutes, I believe. And then we'll get started with dessert okay we're gonna make some cookies and so I am putting together some flax eggs if you've never tried flax eggs before um, the flax just makes a really nice sort of gelatinous texture and it works really well in baked goods so I'm just going to set that aside for a few minutes and to a large bowl we are going to add some plant-based butter yes it looks like a lot <laughs> but you know these are cookies okay then we're going to add some sugar and some brown sugar and when you measure out brown sugar you want to make sure that you pack it down a bit to get the proper measurement we'll just throw that in the bowl with the rest of the butter and the sugar and then I like to mix it by hand. Um, you can use a, one of those large stand mixers, works really well, but that's always kind of a pain for me to use that. I've always just stirred it with my own hands. It gives you some good arm strength. <laughs> and we'll just add a little bit of vanilla to that and our flax egg. So we're sort of getting the, the liquid ingredients together here. Again, just stir it up by hand. Next, we'll be adding our dry ingredients, which is two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. If you're gluten-free, you can just use all-purpose gluten-free flour. One teaspoon of baking soda and one teaspoon of salt.
I decided to add pecans instead of walnuts because that's what I had on hand. And I'm using these chocolate chunks from Trader Joe's, which I was trying to measure out two cups, but that was basically the entire package. We're just going to put our cookie dough into a parchment paper lined baking pan. I love making cookies like this into bars rather than separate cookies because you can just throw the batter all into one pan, cook it all at once, and you're done. You don't have to worry about going and checking cookies every 10 to 12 minutes and putting more in the oven. They're just done in one go. And look at those. They always turn out so ooey gooey and yummy. Mmm, these are just a total classic and my favorite. Um, this is actually just a veganized version of the Toll House cookie recipe. So I'll write that out down below or you can just grab a bag of Nestle chocolate chips and the recipe is on the back. You just replace the butter and the eggs and there you go. So there we go. There's some super easy and tasty vegan Super Bowl recipes you can try for your next Super Bowl party or whatever kind of party you're having. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you'll try some of these recipes out. Like I said, all the links or recipes will be in the description box below, so make sure you check that out. And I hope you have a fantastic weekend and try out some of these snacks. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, peace out. Bye.